Hey guys, welcome back to Rudder Innovations. Today we're going to finish our guest bathroom update here. We're going to tear out this 1970s shower. We're going to tear out the tub because it's got plenty of chips in it. And we're going to update the plumbing fixtures while we're at it. So here we go. This is most people's favorite part, which is demolition. I like to break it into small sections. That's way it's easier to carry out and less dangerous of a piece falling on you. And then you'll remove whatever is behind that, which in this case is sheetrock. All right, once we take the little drain grill off and put your tub removal tool on, just get down, get the screwdriver, put it in there and turn it. Soon enough, you should be able to do it by hand. Next, we'll go ahead and remove our drain lever. All right, if you haven't already, you can go ahead and cut the caulk along the bottom of the tub and there's only a few nails that are hammered in around the tub and you might have screws but you'll remove those and then we'll be able to take the tub and lift it up from the back and remove it depending on your tub spout will depend on how you take it off mine just unscrewed like a screw some of them have an allen wrench you just got to check it all right here we got the hot water line go ahead and disconnect Water is shut off already. These pipe cutting tools are great, but make sure you just do it slowly so that you don't bend the copper pipe because it's pretty soft metal. Okay, we got uh, our hot water line and our cold water line, and we're gonna put on these valves. All right, with these valves, this is a shark bite valve. Um, so with these, there's a chart, which I'll show in the video. I'm gonna show you how far the insertion should be for what diameter pipe and for a half inch it's 15 16 of an inch so you can see I marked my little black spot here um, so I know that it's fully inserted in there and I don't have to worry about whether it's far enough in there or not. The nice thing about these is that you can rotate them once they're on. I'm going to shut these off like that and then we can turn the water back on. After removing the old fixture we replace the drain kit which we can access through the access panel or around the tub to adjust it. These wall studs are spaced way too far apart. They're a full 26 and a half inches and according to the manufacturer there needs to be more support around the exterior of the tub. So we're going to add a few studs in between these, that way it'll give the tub more support. All right, so you wanna pay attention to which way is up on here. We're gonna go ahead and solder in our tub spout. Here I installed a board that I'll be mounting the valve to. You want to make sure and read the manufacturer's recommendations for the depth of the valve to the wall set. This wall set required boards going sideways to support the back of the wall. All right, so you can use plumber's tape, plumber's putty. I used this, which is T plus two pipe thread sealant. We're gonna put PEX to this. So you want to leave enough room, one for the pipe and also the fitting. The beautiful thing about PEX is it doesn't have to be exact. So and these lines are have some play. So we're going to cut it off about right here. Whenever you cut PEX to get a nice straight line, when you're cutting it, you're going to turn the pipe in the cutter. That way you don't collapse 
the pipe under the, the blade. Got to put my rings on that side. Now we get our PEX crimp tool. Go ahead and crimp it on this cold water line. The person who taught me to use a PEX crimp tool always told me to crimp twice on the same ring. So for what it's worth. I decided to use PEX because it's super easy to work with. After you get everything installed, you can remove the extra length of pipe, that way you can get the tub in. Here we just did a dry fit because I actually had a 32 inch tub and a 30 inch space, and so where we did flooring, I had to remove that extra two inches, that way the tub would fit. Once everything is level, you can go ahead and secure the tub into the studs with screws, it helps to have somebody on the other end of the tub making sure that the drain assembly is all in line. Here you can see the top of the drain overflow and the drain kit is too short. So we use this flexible fitting that I'd highly recommend because it allows you to put the drain overflow in perfect position for a good seal. After you have the drain overflow secure, you can go ahead and install the drain for the tub. I would put a surplus of sealant here, um, that way you make sure it's secure because it, you don't want to come back and have to fix a, a leak. I always start mine by loosening it first until I make sure it seats well so I'm not cross threading the drain and then I use my tub removal tool, in this case it's now tightening, making sure that it's secure but not so tight that I'm going to crack the tub. Once you have the tub installed, you can then dry fit your shower walls. You want to pre-drill those holes so you don't crack the shower wall. And when you're test fitting your valve, make sure you follow the instructions so it's mounted properly. To mark the hole for your tub spout, you're going to measure from the outside of the tub over and then from the top of the tub up to your spout. Then you can go ahead and mark your corresponding line for the valve as well. Drill a pilot hole and then use a hole saw. If you have a hole saw big enough, you can stop at this step, but I didn't, so I had to use a jigsaw to go ahead and cut the rest of the hole for the valve. Then you can dry fit it in, and then you can cut the pipe for the spout to length, and this dimension should be in your manual. So for this one, it was three and seven eighths to four inches. It should stick out from the wall. And just to make sure, I went ahead and screwed that fitting on to my tub spout, slid it over the pipe, and then I measured the distance from the back of the spout to the wall so I knew how much of the pipe to remove so that my spout sat flush against the wall. If you're using a thin wall set like this, you can see that there's a lot of play whenever you push the wall back, which is gonna be fixed with adhesive, but when you take your measurement, make sure to push the wall back, that way you get an accurate measurement of where the top spout is gonna be. Once you're done with your dry fit, you can go ahead and remove the wall set and then we'll go ahead and put the fitting on for your tub spout. Make sure after you flux, put flux on both the fitting and the pipe itself, heat it up from the opposite side, let your solder soak in, and you're done. Then you'll apply adhesive to the studs, at least for this wall set. You can read the manual, it'll tell you what to do. And then that way it'll be secured after you screw it, and then you can put your bracing up if that's what it requires, and then it'll be done. After you let that dry, you'll go ahead and put up the finishing sheetrock. This is wet rock, which is supposed to prohibit mold growth, which is important to be around wet areas. And then you'll go ahead and put your joint compound along to finish the wall out. You'll leave an eighth of an inch gap between the sheetrock and the actual tub surround or shower surround and then you'll make sure and caulk that. That way you're, you don't have water soaking into your sheetrock and you'll have a barrier which will be that caulk. After that, you'll, after you're done with all the drywall, you'll paint it, put the shower head on, and then you put the finishing touches. And that's it. Thanks again for joining us guys. 
If you like it, like it. If you have any questions, comment below. Please subscribe, and I look forward to seeing y'all next time. Peace and God bless.